The month of February is National African American History Month, and NASA joins the celebration um, to honor the, some of the contributions uh, of African Americans that have dedicated their lives to spaceflight and the pursuit of uh, discovery. Today, we'll be stu discussing this subject with uh, Sheila Yomape, a biomedical engineer and a flight controller here at the Johnson Space Center. Sheila, thanks for being with us today. Happy to be here. Okay. So, um, tell us a little bit about what the observance of this particular holiday means to you and to spaceflight. I think for me it has changed over time. Having been raised in Ghana, I, once I moved here, it was for me a, a learning time and also a chance to become more aware of the many achievements of African Americans and also to better understand the black experience here in this country. Over time, it's not just about celebrating the achievements, but it's also a time to reflect on how we can contribute to what's been done thus far and encourage others to become a part of it. Excellent. So your contribution, I guess, would be uh, being a flight controller here at the Johnson Space Center. Can you tell me how the space business interests you? So that was a bit of a long story for me. I it started with a, a love for airplanes. I fell in love with airplanes when I was four on my second airplane ride, and I thought, this is the best thing. I have to find a way to always be in an airplane. Um, growing up in Ghana, I wasn't aware of any women in aviation at the time, and the only thing I could think of was to become a flight attendant. So I set the goal at four, I was going to be a flight attendant. So this was my goal until I was about 10 when I was discussing this with one of my teachers. And he asked, well, don't you want to fly the airplane? And I thought, well, could I? And he said, why not? So then I thought, well, someday I'm going to fly an airplane. So a few years later, my sister and I moved here to the U.S., and after high school, I chose to go to college to pursue a degree in the STEM field and also um, obtain my private pilot certificate. So after I did this and graduated, I came here to Houston, actually. I interned at the Hobby Airport in operations. And after that, I, I moved on to Ellington Field. And during this time here in the U.S., I was aware of the space program, but it wasn't something real to me. It was this intangible, surreal, amazing thing. And then I end up working at Ellington Field in Airport Ops, and I'm practically in NASA's backyard. There are astronauts flying in T-38s, and the coolest aircraft that NASA owns are flying in and out of Ellington. And I thought, man, what is going on over there, and could I ever be a part of it? So adding on to this, a friend of mine, a really good friend of mine, ended up starting uh, to work here at Johnson Space Center. So I got to hear about all of her cool experiences here, and uh, I formulated the plan that I was eventually going to work in this environment. I just had to find the right spot. So I continued on in my career, like, still keeping an eye out for something that might suit me. I went on to pursue a master's in industrial engineering, and I also worked in um, uh, IT with uh, quality assurance in uh, NetJets, uh, a private jet ownership company. So I tried to stay in aviation as much as possible. And then a few years ago, the perfect opportunity came up, and I ended up here as a biomedical flight controller. Quite the resume. Um, can you tell us a little bit about what you do at NASA right now? Sure. Um, uh, as a biomedical flight controller, I am part of a team whose primary function is to ensure astronaut health and safety by providing operational and engineering support here in the MCC. So some of the equipment uh, or hardware on station that we support uh, are the the exercise equipment, so the treadmill T2, and uh, the cycle ergometer, CVIS, and the resistive device, which functions the same way as, or serves the same function as a weight machine here on the ground, ARED. 
Um, so in addition to the exercise equipment, we also support air quality monitoring devices, radiation monitoring devices, and that's just to mention a few because the list could go on. <laughs> a lot of cool <laughs> hardware that um, we talk about every day because the astronauts do exercise about uh, two and a half hours per day. Yes. Um, so can you tell us about where you see the future of uh, space flight, what that means for uh, kids, for girls growing up? And. Uh, Yes, I think the immediate future holds the return for a human spaceflight from U.S. soil, which hopefully will reignite the interest in the space program and encourage the youth to pursue uh, education in the STEM field. Long term, hopefully, um, we will achieve uh, a visit to Mars. and. You know, the platforms like ISS is helping pave the way, and it's going to take a lot of research and breakthroughs in just all areas of science, technology, engineering, and the efforts of people with different backgrounds, different experiences coming together to work as a unit to help us achieve this. Diversity is definitely one of the main objectives of NASA, and it's to, uh, to, to achieve these uh, goals. We need a round perspective of thinking. Sheila, I'd like to thank you for being with us today. This is Sheila Yomape, biomedical engineer and flight controller here at the NASA Johnson Space Center. Thanks for being with us. Thank you.